Are we still on? <laughs> uh, camera, Wes. All right, so welcome to our live stream. Uh, we had a rough beginning here. We got kicked off. I don't know why. I, maybe it was something I said, but um, actually I didn't get a chance to say anything. All of a sudden we got kicked off. So I'm sorry about that, you guys. This uh, <clears throat> is not a exact science. I don't know what's going on. Sometimes the uh, our internet connection just goes south. I, I, don't, I don't know why. But anyway, we're here. Wes is here. Say hello, Wes. Hey, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. That definitely was a... I would say it's the internet just went out. I don't know, because there's no other rhyme or reason. But hey, we're all back here, and uh, we're going to do it. We're, we're going to we're gonna gonna get it. this ding show on the air. Get this no matter how the hard show. the internet tries to censor us, right, right. Know, we're yeah. talking about such sensitive content here, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, remember this is your live stream, and I really appreciate when you show up because um, it makes it all worthwhile. If you don't show up, we won't either. By the way, that's Gail working the message board. Thank you, Gail. 
That's my wife of 50 some odd years, 53, I think. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> but who's counting? Uh, feels like 10. It's weird. I don't know why that is. Yeah. Um, so look at. Um, there was a lot of a uh, lot of other guys that on, on that other stream too. We started out strong, and so oh, hopefully yeah. more people uh, keep on joining. Um, yeah, and if you're here now, like this video, hit the thumbs up button, and oh, yeah. that'll help get more people on. I think so. Hit the thumbs up button for us. If you don't subscribe to our channel already. Make sure you subscribe because we do this every week. We're putting out tons of videos, so we want you to be a part of it. So subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Very good. Yes, please do. Please. Please, I'm begging you. All right. Um, and, and also, too, we, uh, we we're we using a new piece of audio gear this we morning. We are, and that's what I thought. I thought, oh, no, this new piece has just went south. But I guess not. It really has nothing to do with the stream. I, I don't know. Just Well, it's in the link. Yeah, but anyway, so hopefully the audio sounds a little better. Um, I, I think it sounds better in my headset already. So, yeah. yeah, let us know what you guys think, if you're hearing everything okay. If it's if you uh, hear some clipping or anything, let us know, definitely. Yeah. Oh, um. So, gosh, we got some talking points that we're going to be, uh, some announcements. So, uh, today's show, we're going to be looking at these two LaSalle guitars. I just got a, boy, you sure got a, got a kind of break. So, I'm going to turn down this. Oh, Lord. Hold on, hold on here. There it is. Isn't that better? Yeah. All right, so... Um, we got two LaSalle guitars, and I picked them up at our Jazz Fest uh, from a vendor there. And uh, I I tell you what, man, when you get a guitar... So I spent two hours on each one of these things yesterday. And um, I uh, uh, kind of, you know, cleaned up, cleaned them up. They're lightly used. I, I don't think... Yeah, they're lightly used. One of them... Um, you know, I, I raised the pickups off the top. I uh, adjusted it, cleaned them up, uh, adjusted the nut a little bit, uh, a couple fret things. Well, let's just not get too deep into this. We're okay. gonna we're gonna feature those in a second, so you can talk all about them, everything you you do. When you, what else we we got going on? Okay. Talk about the international shipping disaster. Oh, the God. international shipping disaster. Yeah. So okay. So I remember that Mc Mc uh, McCarahan. Yeah, beautiful guitar. And I I had a student that was in New York that I had for a long time. He moved to Italy and he still is a student. He really wanted that guitar. Okay. Cool. So um, we get it off to him. I tell you, I've been through this a lot, and I packed those things the best way I know how. I spared no expense or stickers or anything. Or, or are we getting into it? Yeah. Okay. Just right. brief. Just brief. Okay. Just, so come on, just so anyway, it gets to Italy. For some reason, they can't find the guy's address or something. He they there's bad. Terrible communication. They ship it back to me. It goes back to the Port of Los Angeles. They ship it then to my house. And then the guy um, says, okay, I've got an address in Connecticut. Send it to there. My friend will hold here's, it for me. Here's the guitar that we're talking about. Beautiful, handcrafted arch top. So keep going. Keep yeah, going. So anyway... Um, I thought, you know, the box looked fantastic. I thought, wow, this is really neat. I thought, man, um, you know what? Uh, maybe I ought to open it up just in case. I've, it's been sitting in my uh, office for seven days. Open it up. There you go. Look at it. See, see, I have Do Not Stack, fragile, on all four corners. Case looks fine. Case is fine. Everything's... And I and have... And then... The, the neck is... Re but... 
It must have fell off a truck. And boom, that's the that's what happened. There you go, right there. So anyway, we're gonna put out a video on this uh, this guitar. We're gonna look at it a little closer and tell the story a little more in depth. But the moral of the story here is probably don't ship your guitars overseas. And if you do, don't, don't you? use QPS. UPS. So we're gonna put out a we're gonna do a video on that um, either today or tomorrow and put it out over the weekend. So keep your guys' uh, eyes open for that. It's gonna be yeah, tell the whole story <laughs> and back and forth. It's heartbreaking. It sat in the warehouse for three oh, weeks. It was just yeah. everything about it was And the he, best part about it was, you know, mom was telling you don't don't do it. Don't send it. I know. Uh, she she kept saying that. I wish I would have listened. Yeah. And, he, you know, even Gary said, hey, if you've got somebody else that you could sell it to for more money. And I said, no, Gary, look at this. this you're a great guy. You know, it's, it's yours if you want it. So, yeah. So, again. But don't ship overseas. God, I just, I know I'm talking. But it's fixable. So, we're, we'll, it we're, is it, fixable. it'll be, it'll have its day again. But it's funny because, it, you know, it's just a guitar that you, uh. You know, just a really cool guitar. It but is very cool. Very anyway, cool. so keep an eye out for that video. Um, we're going to do it probably later today or tomorrow, and we'll get it out to you over the weekend. So It's funny, you know, when we did the video on that, uh, Pat Kelly called me that day or emailed me or texted me. I said, man, that guitar, that thing is sounds fantastic. And I thought, gosh, man, yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway... So uh, I sold, um, we also sold the uh, Eastman 403. I, yeah, uh, guy got a super good price on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a price that's hard to beat for sure. So, yeah, well, I appreciate it. He's got a nice guitar. That that was a sweet guitar. And, uh, yeah, and those are, those are kind of those in, inexpensive ones, you know, yeah, so yeah. Was, right around. Well, 11, uh, 1100. But, yeah, so. And, uh, can't find them. Very, very yeah, many of other places for that price. But. And it's it's really, I like that. I, I like that four or three. I liked it a lot. I like it a lot. But um, I got a five o three. Five o threes are fantastic guitars. And uh, Eastman eight ten still sitting on the website. Still didn't do any. Uh, I, I got some pictures. I'll be loading up. But we did do a review on that. So if you're interested. Check that out, those out. Yep, and then you sold that awesome ES one sixty five Herb Ellis. That thing was inevitably going to go really fast. Those things it sound did. awesome. It did. It went to a, a really nice guy, man, Blake in uh, Culver City. He's come to our workshop many times. He's at the Jazz Fest. Just a real fun guy, and uh, he has a a black. 175 he said but man this guitar sounded so good and it did it, i don't know why but it did but anyway i'm glad it went to blake um and, and the, he got a great price on that thing too man well he did but uh you know i sold it once to a guy already he got sick and uh he needed the money so he got it back and sold it to blake but, uh, and then I've been trying to get a hold of him, and I don't know if he's in the hospital or what, but didn't seem to respond to his emails. I want to send him some money, but uh, anyway, I hope he's fine. What yeah, else? So, oh, the workshop. You want to talk about the workshop? Yeah, yeah. Um, go, go for it. Okay, we're going to have a workshop, and uh, it's coming up in June, and we only have... Two, two space. spaces left. Yeah. One single room, one double room. Um, as a matter of fact, it's going to be a going to be a good year. The teachers have all now moved into another house on site, um, so it's going to get a little tough walking to the house after celebrating in the Koopman room. But anyway. Um, it's uh, so it's going to be a good year. It really is, and I I think a lot of guys, you know, if you haven't even it, you know, I say we have two rooms, but invariably at the very end when things get 
right down to the wire. Somebody has to cancel. They get sick. They get, I don't know. But anyway, so if you uh, want to come, either get one of these rooms. And Rob Briggs, wherever you are, if you're watching this, you should be the guy coming. But um, uh, get a, if you get a chance and you, you think you want to go, give us a holler and uh, put you on the lift. Something open, opens up, you're in, okay? So uh, don't miss it. Okay, and then what about we've been planning now the Central Coast Jazz Festival again. Narrow, narrowing it down to two spots. You want to tell them about it? Yeah, so we're uh, we're looking. Sorry, I'm trying to make up some lost time here. And well, I can do. I of, can tell them now. Yeah, yeah. Just talk to them because I'm. I'm I got a few. Hello. House cleaning things I got to do. Hello. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're moving it from Cambria. Cambria, we are kind of on the verge of busting out of this. You know. It was, tight in there we hope to get a lot more vendors and and participants attendees so we're moving the facility and it most likely is going to be to solving so solving is a place that uh, old, a Danish community that is a, a destination for a lot of people love to come to solving a lot of wine tasting uh, and then once you do wine tasting, that's all you need to do. A lot of wine tasting there. You're not far from the ocean if you want to go to the ocean. Uh, Vandenberg, Lompoc. You'll probably see a rocket launch. Um, but it's a beautiful facility. It is a Marriott. The rooms are going to be a lot cheaper than they were in Cambria. And uh, it's a bigger facility. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a lot bigger. There's going to be tons more space. For tons sure. more space, and so we're uh, we're really excited about that. Now, the other place we were looking at is in uh, Monterey, the Monterey Tides Hotel, which is right on the ocean. Again, um, it's more expensive for the rooms. Well, we don't know yet. We haven't got their quote. Okay. So. All right. But uh, we'll see. We're waiting on them to get back to us, and then we're going to make the Notice. final decision. Yeah. So we should know the, the dates and the venue and everything uh, very, very soon, With I would say within the next week. Yeah, same time next year. What are the three dates we're looking at? February 28th, the uh, 7th, and the 13th, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, February 20th, March 7th, or you know, write a note that three-week time period. Yeah, so basically the same time as la as this last one, but, you know, just adjusted on the weekend. So, yeah, James, same time of year. Um, uh, James McNamara said same time of year, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the uh, but yeah, I the, the Marriott in Solvang is very, very cool. The yeah. setup is super nice. It's it's really big. It's got tons of room. We could fit 300 people in the concert area. Uh, way more space for vendors. It's just going to be bigger and better than last year. So um, hopefully we can nail down the dates and get uh, an email out to everybody soon. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool. Hmm. Uh, by the way, Carlos... <laughs> Uh, Jimenez Rivera says hi Rich and Wes this is Carlos from Puerto Rico the oh. 403 arrived to Albuquerque waiting for my wife to bring it to Puerto Rico soon yeah everything <laughs> looks good see I'm so glad we didn't ship it to you in Puerto Rico I mean it's it's so expensive and uh, I'm not going to do UPS uh, never again I I'll tell you I I can tell the difference when I get a box from FedEx and I get a box from UPS. You can look at the box and you say, that's from UPS. Sorry, but it's true. So uh, here you have it. Um, yeah, solving. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, um, 
The wives love solving. Boy, there's a lot, a lot of shopping, a lot of stuff. Some people say solving has everything you need. No, excuse me, everything you want and nothing you need. But uh, uh, it's it's a fun place to go, and you walk around the streets there. Yeah, tons of restaurants <laughs> and stuff, especially to the facility. You know, there's probably you know eight or nine, ten restaurants you can walk to from the hotel itself. So yeah, uh, more space at the hotel, cheaper, much cheaper hotel rates as well. So. We're hoping people, we get a lot more people staying at the actual hotel, you know, so we have a kind of a group experience. Yeah. The uh, Cambria Pines Lodge, where we had it last year, it was a little pricey for sure. So, yeah, but it was way, fun. This is way more reasonable when it comes to staying at the actual venue. Plus, God, there's got to be 10 other hotels within a mile away, too. So, yeah, Motel yeah. 6 is right next door. Yeah, tons of options. <laughs> exactly. That'd be sweet. Probably get in that place for 100 bucks. Yeah. And then just walk over and hang out the whole time at the <laughs> Marriott. and Lots of pea soup in Solvang. You're Anderson's pea soup, It man. went out of business. No, it's... It, yeah, it did. They sold it. Did they? Yeah. Are yeah, you sure no, it's, it's still sold. open? Yeah. You've Pretty been sure. there? <laughs> when was well, the last time you've been there? Well, last time we stopped, yeah. Yeah, I've been there the last time we stopped. Which was... I mean, I I, don't I, know. I heard it's on the way to LA. That's a stop for us. I heard that it closed down like a, a, a m month or two ago. So we'll, we'll have to Google, Google, yeah. Google. So anyway, uh, and then you're going to the San Luis Obispo Guitar Show this weekend. I am. I am. Um, so if you're but local, before before we get into that, uh, Gail posted a thing and said, "Hey, you know." the uh, Yosemite workshop, if there's no rooms available, there is Oakhurst, which is only like, what, five, three miles away, that has um, tons of hotels there. Right, you can also bring your RV and stay on site at the place too. That's true. So if you have a trailer, Pat Evans, didn't Pat do that? Oh yeah, Pat does that. Yeah, yeah. You can, it has like a little RV hookup right there at the at the venue, at the, at the uh, retreat. And, Mm -hmm. Hook it right up, and you're good to go. Yep, yep, you bet. Um, yeah, so let's get through this. Uh, the slow guitar show. Slow, man, it's slow there. Um, it's got, uh, it's smaller than L.A. and uh, San Rafael, of course, but uh, that's okay. It's a lot of fun, a lot of good vendors there. Handlebar Guitars is coming there. They're coming up from uh, Orange County. Uh, I don't know who else are the vendors. God Shocks Music from Fresno. We'll be here, there, and everywhere. Um, I don't know who else is going to be there, but I know uh, Vinny's Guitar was there last year, uh, scoping out guitars and stuff. So it's a wonderful, wonderful little one-day event. One and done, which is kind of nice. Ed Miller, the guy who runs it, is a wonderful guitar player, and he has a band called Unfinished Business, and I got to say, I'm just knocked out by these guys. It's a trio, guitar, bass, and drums, and they do all Beatle tunes, and you wouldn't believe how well just those three guys can do Beatle tunes. I'm like stunned. And so uh, it's, it's crazy. Anyway, they're going to be there. Well, he puts it on. Anyway. So, the, yeah, the slow guitar show. So I hope to uh, buy some more guitars and sell a few. So I'm going to take these. By the way, we're going to talk about those. But um, and once we do, if you want one, you probably ought to jump on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what then... Uh, Jazz Guitar Accelerator, we've, we're, you know, a lot of people are signing up and wanting to mm -hmm. get the, you know, spring semester going and get some skills. We, we've had three new signups, which Butch uh, Bowles was on here on the first live stream saying hi for the first time. Or no, he's been on here a few times, but yeah, he doesn't comment much, but hopefully he's back watching. Yeah, he just signed up. Yeah. Um, and then Dave, we just had Dave yeah. sign up, which is... Uh, 
Nice. The- yeah, Dave's down in Sarasota, Florida, and then uh, and then Bruce over in um, Hawaii. In Hawaii, yeah, Maui. Bruce Shear. So he's uh, he's a great player too. He's he's got a crazy story too. Having Tommy Emanuel stayed at his house and Frank Vignola. He's friends with all these guys, and he's uh, over on Maui doing his thing. And, <laughs> Yeah, about to start the accelerator. Uh, I think tomorrow. Yeah, and then Bru- oh, really? and Butch is Saturday. And, so how yeah. many how many current students do you think that makes that for the accelerator? It's I don't take that many. It's, it's you can't take. Maybe, I, most I want is fifteen. Most yeah, so we're 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 right around there. Um, but we got a couple, uh, th- three guys um, graduating. Yeah, yeah, that'll be over soon. So we wanted to put the word out. That uh, you know, we're looking for some new signups. If you're if you've thought about doing it, it's a super good program. Um, you'll learn a lot in a short amount of time, and get away from the uh, poking around on YouTube and True Fire and getting halfway through lessons and not feeling like you're learning stuff. So if you really want to learn stuff and see yourself progress, that's why we designed this program. Um, but yeah, Don Boudreau, who's usually on the live stream, he's he's just about wrapping it up. And... Yeah, Don's a great guy, man. He uh, he uh, he does an Elvis impersonation, and he's the one that bought that. Do you remember that um, Super Eagle, Heritage Super Eagle that I had? Actually, that guitar came from Hawaii, but anyway, uh, he ended up buying it, and I was reluctant to sell it to him at first. Because I thought, oh no, and Elvis, he's just gonna do, you know, I have a blue. You know, he's gonna be just, and I thought, yeah. I, I know that sounds stupid to me, but but it's not like I want this to go to a guy, a jazz guitar guy. Turns out he's a wonderful jazz guitar player, man. So uh, I was really pleased. His father-in-law was a was a guitar player. A Johnny Smith fan. Anyway, so I was really pleased about that. He's a wonderful guy. Fun, fun. Yeah, he's doing good. And uh, Keith. Keith is over in. Uh, is it time for Keith? Keith he's is... almost done. And oh, um, my God. Tilo is also done. Tilo is uh, over over in Cambodia. So. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, we take international students for sure. So yeah. it's definitely if you're looking for. And it's it's what's cool about this. It's not like just signing up for a lesson and then you show up and the teacher's just like, "So what do you want to learn?" You know, it's like, no, we're gonna you tell us what you want and we're gonna create like a customized curriculum for you to get those goals down. You know, so so it's kind of taking the place of all your one on one, just you know, one off Skype lessons. It's this is way better for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did you see what Paul P Man? Yeah, P Man. What's going on, Paul? How's it going, buddy? <laughs> yeah, Paul went to the um, to yeah. the uh, festival for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, he said I might have to sign up for the accelerator. When does that start? You could start um, anytime. anytime. Yeah, yeah. these we're going to be probably having a slot or two open in the next week or two. So if you you want to go and it's what's cool about it too is it just is all around your schedule too so you pick the slots that you want that work for your your time each week so you just know like all right we're meeting monday and friday at 9 a.m and you have to be there nah it's like you you go out look at your schedule you pick the time slot you want and you make it work around your schedule so it's really flexible and really cool so yeah, Paul, if you want to uh, want to want to get on a Zoom call with us, and we'll we'll see where you're at and see if we can do it. All you got to do, jazzguitaraccelerator.com, click on the discovery call, take you like one one minute, and fill out the little form, and you're off to the races. Hey, um, fight fan says I need a seventh interval study. LOL. Does that mean you don't? Are you just kidding or? Because we'll do something on today. I don't have any lesson planned, but we can do that. Um, all right, so. And then uh, finally, too, like the uh, Mastermind group, 
uh, which is oh, for, yeah. for students who go through the accelerator class. They go then into this group lesson thing. We've started about a month month ago, and uh, yeah, you're almost through the whole song. So the idea is you you know you learn a bunch of stuff, uh, different <laughs> techniques and and yeah. and ways of looking at the fretboard during the accelerator. Then we start working tunes and you're with a group of guys and everyone's playing the same song and everyone's around the same skill level because they've all done the accelerator and it's been fun it's been cool that's very cool it, it, it's uh it's really nice because uh you know you when you get on you got four or five well this last one we only had two or three um but uh you get on it's like oh hey there's there's nathaniel hey you know and there's paul and, and you know, one guy's in Chicago, one guy's in Dallas, another guy's in California. So, but then you get to hear them play and have ideas and share ideas and see what they do with the tune. Um, so I assign them things like, you know, let, you know, take this and let's do some back cycling on it and stuff. And um, the light bulb is going off and and I think they're... I think they're enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And uh, so, so yeah. I, I'm happy. As long as I'm happy, then everybody's happy. Because when I'm sad, and then everybody's sad. Yep. Right? Exactly. You, well, bring, you bring everybody down. That's right. Right. If you're down, then you're bringing everyone with I'm you. I'm bringing everybody with me, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Feel my pain. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, you know, if you guys feel like it, give a tip to Wes, because he's, especially today, he's been working hard yeah. on this live stream, and he does appreciate every penny he gets from tip. So if you feel inclined, do that, please. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You guys definitely are always generous, and uh, it's just makes a world of difference for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, today was was a rush. I'm glad we got this new, we got a new audio interface that we're using. You should show it because it's and beautiful. I can't really show it. I don't want to pick it up. I don't want to <laughs> don't, yeah, touch don't, it. Don't touch it. But uh, yeah, it's it sounds way better in my headsets. Everything sounds clearer and the level seems more balanced. And, and the cool thing is we could actually hear now what's broadcasting out to you guys that's right i so. think i think your voice sounds better than mine oh yeah it, you have it you're you have a closer mic proximity which right it's, it gives you the radio voice yeah well next next time or down the line here we're going to get a new, new mic for you so that's going to be coming up these mics are great all right well you whatever. need the preacher mic with the the little oh, yeah like we the little, one of those and we can't fuck well that's what we're gonna figure it out we have we even yes. tried we tried one thing so <sighs> i gotta figure it out though let's be real i you know, you know i could figure that out you know i used to do a lot i used to solder uh with gail's father we used to do uh build video trucks yeah Sweet. We'll build us a video truck, and then we'll take the show on the road. Yes. Okay. Anyway, I'll put um, a, a link to the tip jar in the uh, chat if you guys want to give a tip. That'd be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. So, yeah. So, anyway, let's move on to uh, – let's get one of these Samics down and, and see what they're all about. Okay. Let – you know, let's first play – Play just a tiny little something on the Elf. This is a real L5, a 2013. It's the real deal. Um, I don't, and I, I didn't lift the pickups off the top. Uh -huh. Here you go. Shut the mics off.
Yeah, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hit a button there, Wes. Hit a button. You know, hit one of your buttons. Oh, yeah. Okay, here you go. Is that what you're looking for? You're yeah. looking for some praise from I, the crowd? I, I'm looking for a little acknowledgement that I finished it. Really? Sweet. God. Nice. All right. This is a Gibson L5. Look at how beautiful this is. This is the one that everybody wants. And these are the reasonable facsimiles. All right, so I got two of these. Both are lightly used. Um, start with this one. One is a, a JZ1, the other is a JZ2. Uh, what? You said they were about the year 2000, is right? No, 1990, I believe. 1990? Yeah, according to the serial numbers, I believe they're both 1990. You're kidding. Um, I mean, they're in beautiful shape for the being that old. Holy well, crap. I don't think anyone played them because, you know, as we got them from Patrick Moniz at the festival. That's true. Which all, all you guys who were at the festival probably saw them on display. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he... Um, uh, they had a little discoloration and had to do some shining up on on this guy. This particular one, somebody had the great idea, let's put double-sided tape on the bridge foot. And um, it sounds good in theory, doesn't it? Except when you put it in the wrong spot. So I had to peel that off and scrape all that tape off the thing. And uh, I was going to show you guys, if, you, if you, you think you need to secure the bridge foot to the uh, guitar, what I do is I take a real coarse file, coarser than any of these, and uh, just a nail file. They make them real coarse. And go the opposite way, like here, underneath, going this way, to create some grooves in the bridge foot so it doesn't slip back and forth. You don't have to do many. Now, some people say, oh, I don't want to do that because it might ruin the finish. Well, it might scratch the finish a little bit, but it's under the bridge, so who cares? But the point is, sometimes when you change gauges, and uh, I don't know what happens, you know, adjust the neck differently. You, you gotta now this is a tunematic so if it's in the correct spot to begin with making the little adjustments is not a big deal however some of these guys just put a put it in the round, wrong darn spot oops where's my rag i still have some polish on this uh these have duncan design pickups which i tell you what le leads me to believe that this is not that old because uh, I don't think they did that back then, 1990. So it's just hard to get the dating on some of this stuff. Um, this guitar is not made in Korea, I don't believe, because usually they put a sticker on there that says made in Korea. This is probably made in Indonesia. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, everywhere that I see on, like, on this LaSalle page right here. Yeah. Greg Bennett Designs. I mean, it says Duncan Design HB101 Humbucker Pickups. Uh, okay, well, this other one doesn't say that. What do you mean, what other one? Th this one. This doesn't have Duncan Design Pickups. How do you know? It doesn't say it. You see how it says it on that pickup? Can you zoom in there and see? I don't, where does it say it? Well, it says it right oh, on... Oh, I see it right there on the bottom. 
there. Yeah, right. Dun Duncan Design. Or... Yeah, I mean, everyone that I see on on here has had the same same thing. So what Duncan Design just means that Seymour said, okay, well, uh, do ten thousand and one windings, use this magnet, and uh, you're good to go. Right. Whether they do it or not, that's a different story. But Duncan told him what to do. So, um, hold on before I put that up. Um, but I wanted to talk about this top. Now, this top is looks like it's a spruce laminate, which I, what I was reading is it's a piece of spruce, a piece of poplar, and a piece of spruce, or, or it could, you know. That's what I'm thinking. But anyway, but check out the back. This is what is just so crazy. Look at how pretty that is. How do they do that? Yeah, that's nice. Even the sides, too. Oh, the the sides. sides of that are really nice. And that uh, quilted maple there yeah. on the sides. Um, yeah, it says bound arched select spruce top is what, what they say. Right, but it's laminate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, look at the back of the neck. It has the um, this little splice there. Neck is perfect condition, no dings, no nothing. Um, it's they, a mahogany neck, what, it says. What do they call that joint? The scarf joint thing, the yeah. luthier joint or whatever. Well, that doesn't look like mahogany to me. It looks maple. I mean, I'm literally looking at the page here for gregbennettdesign.com. Okay, okay. Like, but it you look at it. I mean, it's not. I mean, do you think he's like put the wrong information on his site? No, I didn't think he did, but who knows? I uh, Eastman has had the wrong information on their site. Like you know, I see it all the time. It. I think. It, I don't know. I don't know what goes on. But anyway, looks maple to me, but okay, it's mahogany. Um, but anyway, the true test is how it plays. It plays great. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more work on the, the fret ends. Uh, I did a little bit of work on the nut, and I think the nut is fine. Nice distance. So... Um, this guitar, these are going to be about nine fifty, I think. Nice dollars. They yeah. come, both come with hard shell cases. Yeah. So this one right here does say it, this one. It's which is from. It's an old listing for one from American Music, and it says it says Maple Neck on this one. As well. So yeah. Hmm. So that's what I'm talking about. You know they. Who knows? Maybe they were sitting around and going, you know, wow, we ran out of maple or uh, mahogany nuts. Put a maple on it. I don't know. How come it's nothing's coming out? Uh. Yeah, this this chord kind of drives me nuts. It's a little weaker pickup than, than the L5. And I adjusted the pickup's uh, height. It's funny, when I got it, it's like some of the screws were like really out there. It's like, why don't you just raise this side? Anyway. So... What scale is that? Well, that's 25 and a half, I'm assuming. Right. Shall we verify? Yeah, because I'm seeing conflicting information on that as well. All right. Yeah, 20, one says 25 and a half, which I would believe is what it is. 25 and a half. Um, 25 and one half. Yeah, but uh, there's not many on here on on reverb. There's, there's a couple. This 
burgundy one and uh, another one as well. This is a blonde one, but uh, yeah, yeah, they're they're hard to find for sure. So. Well, the results there was twenty four results for that. Well, they're not all Samic LaSalle. There's oh this. Oh, yeah. this other Samic stuff. I yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. Because I could only find two. There is, yeah, there's only two on there. Little. It's got Grover tuners on it, though, it says. Yeah. Uh, which is. <laughs> Todd Richmond, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. That was a quote by Abraham Lincoln. I like that. So other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how'd you like the play? Um, this is a little more acoustic, a little, or do you want to? Yeah, well, yeah, here, play something, and we'll kill the mics here. Sounds but, nice, for sure. Yeah, it's a nice sounding guitar. I mean, gosh, $950, really? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely... Plus, I love the look of it, too. So, yeah, it's a um, 17-inch body with a 3.5 depth, right? Yes. And, you know, if you've ever thought about getting an L5, like you're, you're like uh, Jones in for an L5, right? Get one of these first. Make sure you're happy with this body size. Because uh, it's a big boy, okay? And uh, some people get them and they, after a while they get, oh, my shoulder hurts. Well, you're probably holding it wrong for one thing. Um, um, you got to hold it across your body like this. <laughs> See? Kirk, and, uh, Kirk and Gina said uh he just picked up a LaSalle Jay-Z4 after watching our earlier videos on uh oh, on nice. that. thanks for the re recommendation it's a very nice guitar um and then Bruce uh Bruce I think it's Bruce Adolf 
says, uh, glad you're going to talk about the Greg Bennett design guitars today. Greg was a brilliant man and was always kind to me. I miss him. He redesigned 153 instruments for Samick. Wow, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I just heard he recently passed away. That's sad. And somebody said earlier Dickie Betts passed away. Is that true? I do not know. I guess somebody wouldn't say it if it wasn't. That, that, that sucks. Yeah, uh, Rodrigo, um, he's li down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, says, I have a Samic LaSalle Jay-Z 2. It's fantastic, smooth, has fantastic playability. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then Neil was asking, uh, just wondering, how does the Samic Bennett's compare to the older artist series? I have an HJ650N. That is great. So... We've I have never, no idea. Yeah, Sorry. never played one of those. But no I was idea. poking around online. They, there are um, a few of those out there for sure. The artists, um, the artist ones. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, they're like uh, this one right here. So it's still a big. Oh yeah, I remember seeing those. Yeah, still a cool looking guitar. So I'm sure they're probably. I like pretty... this this tailpiece better. Yeah. Remember we were doing that thing about the tailpieces. Right. Check this out. Oh yeah, that thing puts out some tone. It's like a drum. Hey. Yeah, that does sound a lot like. Sounds um, a lot like uh, the Guild. Well, Maybe. the guild rang more, I yeah, think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but this is definitely creating a... Uh, Sustain. Hey, uh, uh, people, woo, 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 woo. people do that anymore. Indians, did they ever do that? Woo, 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 woo. Native, no comment. Na na Native Americans, excuse me. Um, so yeah, that uh, yeah, that's cool. Cause I mean, we well, we were hitting the the bridge on like the 175, and that thing didn't make a sound. It was just like no. ding, 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 <laughs> ding. It was like, yeah. Yep. Yep. You you are right. Uh, let's see. Let's play. Let's play a little tune on here. Um, John uh, Smith is asking. What microphone do you use and what camera recording equipment do you use currently? Um, we have three Sony cameras, the A6000s. Uh, they're pretty pretty basic cameras. They put out a great great um, great video signal though. Yep. Um, and then we have these weird Russian mics that we got. They're um, good mics, man. They, they are. And they were like. Uh... Well, we've I've had the, we've had these mics for thirty years. No, maybe not thirty years, but twenty five. There you go. And uh, they're uh, they're they're good mics. Yeah, they're yeah. just crazy, crazy good. So yeah. you know, and they were like at the time, I believe, about a hundred bucks. Yeah, and then we uh, we use a Mackie mixing board. Here's the. Uh... Here's the new interface. Whoops. Oh, I can't see it. It's too dark. Oh, there, there it is. is. Kind of see it. It's a universal, audio. universal audio volt. Look at the input. It's awesome. White, uh, white balance just went to hell on that camera. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Let me fix it. Um, but yeah, definitely make it a. Definitely making a difference, though. I, I like this interface already. I like knowing that mm -hmm. the signal I see is what I'm hearing. So the signal you see is what you're hearing. Yeah, this signal is I it? see on the screen here with the audio oh. guides is no, what's I, coming out. I thought out of I was going to catch you, make you sound stupid. And then like we, it's it's all going through a, a Mackie mixing board, which we used to plug straight into the laptop. It's like an interface mixing board, mm -hmm. but now we decided to go from the Mackie into this new interface, and it's already sounding better for sure. And so we're, we're happy. Yep. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's see. Thanks everybody who gave me a tip. By the way, 
I really appreciate it. Lachlan, James. Lachlan, missed you there. P-Man. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that, buddy. Uh, Mark R. was wondering, uh, does Rich know, are there any Gibson alternatives to the Birdland with that sharp cutaway? Well, the Birdland, you know, has the rounded and the sharp, depending on the year. But, get, no, I think they should make, like, um, a Birdland with a bigger body. I, I don't know why they don't. They, why somebody doesn't. I had... Here's here's an example of the first vintage guitar I bought was a 1950 something Guild X50 and it had a Birdland scale on it. And after a while I wanted something else and I sold it. And I've been trying to find one ever since. They could they just throw a neck on there. Um, you can get them with 25 and a half, 24 and three quarters, but I've never seen another one with 23 and a half. And that guitar sounded great. So one of my pet peeves about a Birdland, it's it's got too many frets. You could have dang moved up the pickup a little closer, but it cuts through. So everything is, you know, give and take. Let's play a little something on this and then we'll sure. move on. Okay, here we go. Whoops. Whoops. Jeez. Eh, Talk, Wes. Um, uh, Albert Le Levy says, um, Ibanez makes the Pat Matheny model that has a double cutaway. Um, which I don't, I'm not sure if I know Wait what that is. Wait a minute. Yeah, why don't you? Well, you haven't what? seen one of those? Hold on. Oh, God. Here we go. Hey. Yeah. I don't know if th these are Octava mics. They might be like a copy version of Octava um, because I think they say they say ASM on the back of them. There's nothing, no markings of uh, Octava on them. So my my guess is they're like a uh, a copy of that for sure. Um, yeah. Um. And let's see if you, I missed your question, by the way, please just throw it back into the chat. There's a lot of comments on here and I was scrambling to get things uh, going. Jay Trailer says, hey, Rich, this is Jay in St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm enjoying the Eastman 480 I got from you. Like oh. liked the arrangement of uh, Blue Moon. Anywhere I can get a copy of it? It's on the library. Yeah, Guitar College Library dot com which by the way we just uploaded rhythms at first sight onto the library yeah which is a uh, course on uh, identifying rhythms and one of the hardest things of music is the rhythmic reading rhythms you get that out of the way then you you got to fill in the notes but the rhythms should not be what's holding you back um so anyway you ready uh, sure might have to adjust <laughs> oh, try again i thought we were ditching that player by the way <laughs>
Enough of that. Well, that happened there. I got lost for one, but but aren't we going to compare these? I mean, this song goes on for days. Oh. Uh, yeah. All right. So that was that was that one. So yeah, that that one right there, particularly that is a the Sam McLaselle Jay Z two. Two. Um, not sure exactly what the differences are between like the Jay Z one, the Jay Z two. I think it's just Jay Z three and Jay Z four. So there's four different models of it. Huh. Um, there's well, not a lot of not a lot of info uh, on there about it. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> um, and then this other one that he's grabbing right now is a Jay Z uh, one. This amber colored thing boy right away you can feel this is heavier right what song was that that you just played four on six for william melt yeah what's up william how's it going buddy how's your leg doing william yeah what's with that man yeah you're getting some good uh playing time in for sure <laughs> i bet hanging out all day on the couch with your guitar what are the odds of that happening look at that do you see that? What are the odds of that happening? How could I couldn't do that if I tried? Yeah. Hey, uh, mom. I don't know if you saw that on here, but can you? Mark R was asking you to put the link to the rhythms at first sight course on on here. Can you throw that? Oh, there you go. You did. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um. Yeah. So, if anyone has any other questions, again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like what you're seeing, um, yeah, he says uh, tons of practice going on here for William. Awesome, buddy. That's that's cool. Well, sure. William, you're a talented hopefully you're, kid. Yeah, hopefully you're not in too much pain, but kid, he's probably, like fifty. Probably uh, the pain's probably getting better day by day. Uh, Kirk and Gina says Jay Z three has a Florentine cutaway oh. jay-z4 has a neck mounted mini humbucker got it okay thank you yeah thank you so what's the difference do you know the difference between the jay-z1 and the jay-z2 yeah it, it looks to me exactly the same yeah, except one silver one's gold hardware right yeah. now um this one let's let's take a deep look at it this particular one is beautiful color, man. Uh, again, look at that quilted maple back. Quilted. God dang. Look at that. I mean, they just look like an expensive guitar just based on that 
I know, and they laminate. I I predict someday they will be. Um, you know when Datsun pickups first came out, they were cheap pickups, guitar not guitar pickups, truck pickups. I try to buy one now, a restored one. Now, this is in beautiful shape. It's got a crack here in the laminate finish right here, which means the top one cracked. But it's it ain't going nowhere anyways, and it's a laminate, so... And then there's also a little kind of like... Oh, yeah, there's a, this little scrub thing here, like it ran into a mic stand or something and just made a nice little goober there. Right. But the neck, look at the back of the neck. Again, this looks to me to be maple. But the neck has no dings at all. According to Patrick, these... Real these, nice tuners, too. Yeah, it's got the Grover tuners. In beautiful shape. Yeah, I think it was like... I mean, it's shined up, so that's one thing nice about silver or uh, the chrome is that you don't have to worry about shining it and taking off, you know, the finish like a, like a gold finish. Oh, Tim Scarrow's taking off to the dentist. Oh, Hopefully wow. it goes good, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. You know, I admire you. You've got the guts to go. I've got to go to the dentist. But good for you, Tim. I'm telling you, just need to keep on hitting up Joel Henderson and his buddy. I forget his friend's name, but I will yank some teeth out for you for a guitar. <laughs> Maybe he'll tra trade you some something for that Samick there. Yeah, Gordon Zoot in Birmingham says that that maple back really pops, and that is the truth. That thing looks, the back of that looks really nice. So again, this is the same um, same dimensions, three and a half, 17 inch body depth, or a 17 inch bout, three and a half body depth, 25 and a half scale, and uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, but again, of course they put the strap there. I, I, I really don't like the strap button there. I, it's a pet peeve of mine. Um, let's play something on this. This particular guitar sounds a little thicker than the other one. Let me kill the mics here. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Paul says, uh, I like it when guitars aren't in 100% perfect condition regarding the finish. That way, when I ine inevitably ding it a little, I don't feel like I'm ruining a perfect guitar. I, I'm with you, Paul. I, that's exactly how I feel. I had a guitar made for me uh, uh, by uh, Schaefer. And... Uh, Man, the first time I put a big nick in that damn thing, it just made me sick to my stomach. But anyway, um, let's play a little more four on six. So what about, what, just real quick about that guitar, what, is that all you really notice on that? Is the weight, like a weight difference? I mean, I'll tell yeah, you right now, that pickup is hotter. It is hotter, yeah. Yeah, I had to turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that they, they sound a little... They sound know. different. Yeah, they sound different for sure. Well, you know, it's, if this pickup's hard, hot, hotter, you're going to get a darker sound. Yeah, other... I would say that's accurate because it does sound a little darker. The other yeah. ones sound a little like cleaner and a little more sparkle to it. Yeah. But yeah. this one sounds... A little really, thicker. Yeah. yeah, it does. Thicker, darker mm -hmm. for sure. So what about like just the way it feels? The, it the feels neck? exactly the same. Yeah. This, you know, the action on this, I could, uh, could probably lower it a little. What about the uh, the design of the headstock there? Oh uh, yeah, I don't know what the big deal is. I, it's a headstock. I I, it, I like I, it. Yeah, I like it. It looks, you know, it's definitely just different, a little different, but it's got style to it. So some people were saying. Uh, looks a little funky but i like it so it's, it's not you know it's not super out there like the d'angelico's um <laughs> yeah and exactly. it does definitely yeah. like the uh heritage headstocks just look like they're like a foot long on on some of those heritages so um yeah yeah i like it. i like it it has a, that cool little round thing on i the love top. the color of this this would have been nice in gold, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would definitely. But yeah, that that uh, that one sounds really good as well. Um, cool Cat said, uh, "Sounding good may rival those new D'Angelicos," which I'd I'd say so. Yeah, they're they're probably pretty close. Um, I wish we had that. Still had that double. Or actually, it's only a single humbucker, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we sold that, didn't we? Yeah. Um, which, on the road again, said, uh, so do you have, do any guilds come near the artist award for you? Well, um, <clears throat> you know, the 700 is pretty darn close. Right. Uh, but, um, yeah, the Artist Award, though, is super special. Which he, on the road again, asked earlier, how much would you personally pay for a 74 Guild X175? How do they compare to the X500? The, the X175? Yeah. Yeah, uh, no comparison. Well, the the seven hundred it is a nicer guitar. It's like the difference between a one seventy five and L five. Um, we probably should mention too that both of those guitars have your custom string gauge on them. Yes. So they're the exact same strings on there. Um, yeah. Yeah. This this. Let's let let let's play some more then, and and we'll see if we can. Do you want to? Should we play more or not? Yeah, but let's play a, a a tune on that with a track. We'll do the. Can we just the same one? Sure. Okay then. <laughs> Thank you. 
You know, I forgot. We're, we're supposed to play Footprints today. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it was on the list. I forgot. Well, not too late. It's not too late. So anyway, what do you guys think? You like this one or you like that one? I'm more used to the sound of this. Yeah. It's just the, it's just the difference of pickups. That's all. Right. Welcome. So, uh, anyway. Uh, Kenny G, thanks, Rich and Gail. Gotta go, but still in California next week. Hopefully get a chance to watch live again. Have a great day. Thank you for watching, Kenny. And um, I think I saw um, William had the split with Jenny. Yep. Janet, 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 won't, uh, wrong key. Janet, 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 won't you come along with me? Jenny, Jenny, woo, Jenny, Jenny. Yeah, P Man says that uh, I like the amber one better, looks better, sounds better. Yeah. But other than that, I like it. I, I like them both. Um,. Yeah, they're not far off from each other for sure. No, not um, at all. Not at all. I think too though that that amber finishes. You know, it's just you don't see many. No, oh, this finishes. You don't too. see many guitars. You know, with these that are. Uh, you know, I got a good buy on these, and uh, so but like nine fifty, I, I I think that's a good price. Um, 
Yeah, and the cases too. The that cases are new. They're like brand new. And they're hard new. cases, two hundred dollar cases. Yeah, and well, Patrick said that he got those from a factory that were brand new. Oh, really? Yeah. The so, cases? No, the the well, I'm assuming the cases came with the guitars. Every guitar, every well, Samic I've seen on here has a hard shell case with it. Oh, I yeah, the two I, that are on Reverb have gig bags. Oh, really? Yeah, but the, uh, th these aren't these aren't Samic cases. The one's an Epiphone and one's something else. You know, the things get mixed up. They get guitars get traded and what have you, and so things happen. But yeah, he said that he was in. Um, I forget where it was, but he, someone in Germany, someone had those in a factory in Germany. Oh, and really? They're brand, brand new, yeah. Uh, so, they were like still in the boxes. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he's like, I don't think they've been played much at all. I no. don't if only I think maybe when he's got them displayed at guitar shows or something. Yeah, um, there's a little bit of fretware on. I'm just, I mean minuscule right um the other thing that um leads me to believe they haven't been played much especially the the blonde one is there are no dings on it at all yeah that thing's yeah you know, brand so, new yeah yeah which for you know, twenty or thirty year old guitar. It's either a, they're either nineteen nineties or two thousand. That's that's what I've got huh. by researching the serial numbers this morning. Um, Kira and Gina. Sorry for messing that up. I kept saying Kirk and Gina. She said, "Rich, the guitarist for Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels, who did Jenny Jenny, <laughs> he played a Birdland." Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, so, can we play four on six with that thing? Yeah, I sure. We'll just play a little oh, wait, bit. Oh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Dicky Bits too. Shoot. Well, okay, yeah, let's play a little bit. But but then I have footprints too. I want to play. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, that. So that I think definitely sounds better than the than the Samix for sure. You can notice. I I don't know. To me, it's just smoother. Still, it sounds a lot more like the amber one than yeah. you know. Those ones are really comparable. I think that that uh, blonde one's a little in its own world over there, but still <laughs> awesome. I wouldn't mind hearing that uh, one more time if you. The blonde one? Yeah. But you don't need to do it right now, but maybe before it's over, we can play well, one more tune on we're, it. We're getting close. We're getting close. Yeah. Well, we also started like 20 minutes late. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of viewers still. Yep. Um, but yeah, that you just hear that, I don't know, it just sounds more polished and clear. Still very dark, that L5, for sure. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, Dicky Betts, wow, that's too bad. Uh, so Dicky Betts was eighty, huh? Hmm. Um, I I I really liked his work that he did. Uh, geez, and he always had that cool tone, man. This is the hardest switch. Yeah, someone had commented how they they like the uh, the switch placement on the the. Um, I like it better too on up the here on the sandwich. Yeah, here. it actually. Um, I think down here is probably better for the overall acoustic sound of, or sound of the guitar, you know, because it. it up here is a big area to put a hole in here. It's, it's probably not a good idea. But down here, I like the L5 or the uh, Tal Farlow where it's, you know, right right here. It's, you know, you can do it right there. Boom, boom. Boom shakalaka. Is that where here. the L4 that has it too? No, L4 is up here, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, what about um, Elizabeth Reed? So people are saying memory of uh, Elizabeth Reed. Uh, do you know who that is? It's not ringing a bell. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you say? Not ringing a bell. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what's going on with that finish. It kind of kind of got a uh, stickiness to it. The Gibson yes, sticky smell. Oh, that would be me. I've been swimming in raw sewage. I love it. Leslie Nielsen. I love it. <laughs> All right, so Jan Rooney told me once she was, went to a uh, some party on the Queen Mary, and it was some celebrities were there, and one of them was Nestle. Nestle. Leslie Nielsen 
and he was running around. He had this little fart-sounding device, and he'd stand next to people and let it go. It's kind of funny. Let's go get out of the fifth grade, but no, some of us don't want to. It was too much fun. Oh, no. oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> um, S. Flav S. Flavius says, I have a Washburn J6 Montgomery, uh, very similar to these Samix. I suspect it was made by Samick. <clears throat> J6 probably refers to the fact that the J is the next le letter after I, and six comes after five. I get it. Okay. Is that too far over your head? What was it again? <clears throat> that J probably refers to the fact that J is the next letter after L, and six comes is the next number after five. Well, the, the J stands for jazz, don't, don't you think? Jay-Z. Well, it's like an L5 and then J6. You know, they're both like the next letter number after L5. You I know? see. So instead of calling it a Washburn L5, you'd call it a J6. I see. Yeah. Which those are those are cool. We I would love to get one of those and, and test it out. Who had one of those? Dave... <laughs> Out in Cayucas, I think, has one of those. Uh, has a what? Has a Washburn J6, West Montgomery. Huh, interesting. Yeah, um, I wonder if we could borrow that one one day from him. He'd probably let us. I'm sure he would. Yeah. Because, yeah, that, that's definitely another... Uh, another good option for sure to you know compare to for the cheaper priced arch arch tops you know mm -hmm. um so we should we should get our hands on one of those um i was gonna play footprints i'm not happy with this version but um Explore America says Leslie Nielsen would hang out at the 7-Eleven in the morning and talk to everyone in Fort Lauderdale in his <laughs> older years. He used to stay in the penthouse above his condo in the summer when he was a kid. Oh, yeah. Everyone in town loved him. Very approachable guy. Yeah, that's cool. Play your gladiator soundbite. Joey. Ever hang around the gymnasium? You like movies about gladiators? <laughs> That's funny. I don't care who you are. Boy, we're missing uh, Jim Rolfe and and uh, Rob Riggs. But I I want to say thank you for everybody who's here. Yeah, it's just. Cayucas, one of the fog capitals of the West Coast, really. I uh, yeah, just it sucks when we get knocked offline like that. We lose a lot of people, I think. <clears throat> but huh, yeah, it does. Yeah, Richard B Bishop says a lot of Rich's tunes he plays are nice driving music in light urban traffic, very stimulating. Um. Which that's why I want to make this this thing into a podcast, man. Because then people could listen to it. They don't have to watch it. They could just listen. You know. Well, it's perfect. Yeah. Well, what's what's keeping you? The long list of other things that I have to do, like, yeah. Good, yeah. You know. Unfortunately. There's only um, one of me. That's that's unfortunate, you know, because if there was a couple clones, we could have this dialed in for sure. But it's coming soon, definitely. Good, let's clone you. Yeah. Oh, Jim Rolfe is here. Hey, Jim Rolfe. Are you coming to the show this weekend, you and Rob and Kirby? It's just curious. Um, it to Sensorio. What? No, no, to the to the uh, slow show. Oh, to the the, the guitar. Show. I actually have two gigs 
two gigs this weekend. That's a record. It's not the one at Puffers is not this weekend, by the way. It's next weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, you have time to practice. Yeah, I saw that they posted a thing that said Sunday someone's playing and I was like, that's not that's not Julie Kelly. Really? Yeah. Of course, don't believe what you read on the internet. Yeah. I'll have to look it up, make sure. Mom right. already did. Oh, she did? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, Jim's not sure yet. Uh, but, you know, that, that show is nothing compared to the L.A. ones. So don't, you know. You've already been to the mountain. Now you're just going to the hill. All right, should I? Footprints, wonderful little tune. Shall we play it? Yeah. Unfortunately, it ends. It's only two minutes long. What's going on? Why is that uh, track so short? Is that just? I don't know. It, 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 I don't know. I don't know why. I, you know, I couldn't. You don't want to hear the, the saga of this morning, but yeah, that's that's an old track that I used for teaching something. Okay, yeah, the bass figure isn't in there. Sorry. Or whatever it is, I forgot. What wow. was that? Is that outside? Someone here? peeling out in the the uh in the old folks hall? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That was interesting. Sounded like someone slammed on the brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, huh? Crazy cuckoo. All right, so we're winding down here, Wes. What do you think? No? Yes? We've covered a lot of stuff here. Yeah. Michael Murray is here too. He says, "Mike Murray, what's up, Mike?" Mike Murray. Good to uh, Mike see Murray. You. Wow, gosh, Mike, we haven't seen you in ages. Jeez, you still in Texas and playing with that soul band? Speaking of playing with bands, Todd Richmond's got a gig down in L.A. on Saturday with Steely Jam. Oh, really? Wow, cool. Uh, yeah, that's awesome, man. That'll be fun. Wow, that's that's cool. Yeah, so so far. Whoa, holy jeez. Oh, stop. 
Wow, all the all the riffraff in the neighborhood is going on out Somebody's there. Somebody stealing cars, probably. What's going on? Yeah. <clears throat> Gosh. Uh, D Swingle says, "Have you compared uh, it the Samic to the HJ650? We're gonna have to look into a, what, that what? HJ650. That's the Samic Artist series. Oh. Yeah." We're gonna have to look into that. I think you. I think there's a few of them on Reverb that are pretty decently priced for sure. But yeah. Let's end with uh, what we started with with fried pies. Don Spain, what's up, Don? Don, Good to see you. No, it's gonna be so nice to have you at the. Uh, yeah, the the uh, yeah. workshop, man. That's gonna be fun. It's cool up there. You're gonna love it. Yeah, that that will be fun. Be fun. Uh, we have a blast, and it goes by so quickly. You you think what happened? It's already Friday. It's like, jeez, man. Well, anyway, look at anybody interested in these. Remember, I'm going to be taking them to the show. So if you want one. Yeah, I, you, I put the phone, your phone number and email in the uh, description of this video. So if you want to you want to uh, pick pick up one once. Hey, Jim Fox is here. Hey, Jim. Hi, Jim. What's going on, buddy? Um, and Michael, uh, Mike Murray said he yeah, still in McKinney, Texas. Oh, cool. I want to... Uh, Jim, I want to come down and play play with at your guitar night thing sometime if if you'll have me. Um, Where does he do that at? In Ventura. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be loads of fun. Yeah. And Mike Murray. Um, so Mike, we were on a cruise together. We did a guitar camp on a cruise, and Mike was there. Um. And he taught me his strategy for playing craps. What was it? It was no pass line bet. He, he thought the pass line bet was the worst bet. But I think he was just placing a few numbers. And he was making money. I was going nuts and losing. Yeah, I've always been uh, on board with that strategy. You know, play the field, man. Play the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and all the little old ladies. Right. Um, uh, but you know what? That field numbers, man. Those suck suckers come up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Richard Bishop said uh, or asked, "Would you ever do Smalls, New York?" Of course. Got to have a reason to get there. Yeah. There you go. Just get over there and do it. Yeah, I've got a gig. Right. The whole trip off. Right. Exactly. And then Jim said he uh, he's working on it. For the, oh, awesome! Yeah. Fun, fun. Um, is, and then is hmm? the L five for sale? The red L five. Maybe. Good question. Maybe. Well, maybe what? Like maybe what? I'll sell it. So apparently, if the price is right, he'll sell it. Yeah, you have to shoot me an offer. Yeah, they. Call them. The email and phone number are in the um, in the description. So call yeah. and chat. We'll see. Yeah. Um, Michael, do you still have your heritage or your uh, Hofner very thin? Mike had a Hofner very thin. It was just cool, cool little guitar. All right. Uh, let's play this one more time. All right. And. Come on, let's go. Whoa, it's going to be loud. Thank you. 
Yeah, that thing sounds pretty good, pretty darn good, man, for 900 bucks, whatever you're going to sell it for. Yeah. Love it. Uh, Richard Bishop said, uh, take a look tonight at Smalls and Mesro live streams, 7.30 till 2.30 a.m. Yeah, there you go. You can, if you play at Smalls, you can be on the, their live stream, too. So. Cool. I wonder if we could patch it into our live stream, too. It'd be awesome. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, look at I want to thank everybody for coming. To hey, our real quick, real quick. On the road again, uh, yeah. asked if you could, he lost connection and said, catch my question regarding the value of a 74 Guild X175. What would you pay for something like that? And how it compares ah. to an X500. X500 is a bigger guitar. It's probably sounds better. I, uh, that's my estimation. Uh, so uh, I think an X one seventy five should probably be between two and three, you know, or eighteen and three, you know. X fifty is probably around three to four. X seven hundred four to five six. No, well, you know. And then Audio Talk said, uh, after watching this show now for a couple of weeks, I get the feeling you may have more for sale than what's on the website. Is there a simple list of equipment that you can be posted here? Thank you. Well, oh, there is a lot more for sale than what's on the website. Trust me. Uh, but yeah. You just have to call. There's a number in the... I'm a guitar hoarder. Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff. So, uh, <laughs> but again, audio talk. Shoot us a call. Talk about it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I thank you. My mother thanks you. My father thanks you. My dog thanks you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure entertaining you folks. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll see you next week, right? Wes, are we going to do this next week? Yeah, we are. Okay, we're going to do it next week. It's going to be a really good one. Tell them what we're going to do. Um, I don't know yet. we got to yeah. figure it it's out. It's going to be a good one, though. I know it. I can feel it. Yeah. So thanks, guys, for joining us. Cool Cat P-Man, thanks for the tips. Pre appreciate it. Everyone who gave me a tip, that was really thoughtful and yeah. really appreciate it. I'll and, give uh, you a tip, all right. We are, uh, yeah, we're going to keep trying to make it better every week. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're working on it. Okay, so uh, thank you again. Join us again um, at 11. 
o'clock on Thursdays. And remember, you can always watch us uh, in the replay. But it sure is nice to have you live. Like and like the video for us, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want to be on our get on our mailing list, his email's in the uh, chat. You can. So then we send out email reminders about the show too. Makes it easy for you to do it. And uh, yeah, like Don said, keep those cards and letters coming. <laughs> Good one, Don. Yeah. And then Pat said, call Gail. She knows the inventory. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.